Story recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain an action, adventure, drama film called War for the Planet of the Apes. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Years ago, a scientific experiment gone wrong gave rise to a species of intelligent apes, but it destroyed most of humanity in the form of the flu. A new ape civilization led by Caesar struggled to coexist with the humans and eventually resulted in a fight when a rebel ape named Koba led a vengeful attack against the humans. The humans were able to send a distress call to a military base in the north and prompted a ruthless colonel with his battalion to be dispatched and exterminate the apes. Caesar evaded the colonel for years and was rumored to be marshalling a fight from a hidden base in the woods as the war rages on. In the present, deep in the woods, a group of human soldiers, with the help of Koba's former subordinates, sneakily finds an ape encampment. The soldiers launch a sudden bombarding attack and kill a lot of apes. One of the apes signals the rest of the ape army for backup, and they immediately launch a heavy counterattack, wiping almost all of the soldiers. One of them, Preacher, survives and tries to call the colonel for backup but is caught by the horde of apes. Caesar, along with his subordinates, Maurice, Luca, and Winter, arrive at the encampment, where they meet the surviving humans. Preacher recognizes Caesar and tells him that they were looking for him and thought he was dead. Caesar explains that it was not him who wanted war, but his former ally, Koba. Caesar further tells them that Koba is already dead and he only fought to protect his tribe. Koba's former subordinate, Red Donkey, who was also captured, tells Caesar about the ruthlessness of the colonel and threatens him. This angers the apes, so Caesar commands Winter to take Red Donkey outside. Caesar lets the captured soldiers go as a message offering peace to the colonel. Winter, however, returns to Caesar and tells him that Red Donkey managed to escape. At the lake, Caesar expresses his regrets about Koba to Maurice, telling him that his actions' consequences still haunts them. Maurice comforts Caesar and tells him that no one could have predicted Koba's rebellion. Shortly after, Caesar's son, Blue Eyes, and his friend, Rocket, arrives home from a long journey. Blue Eyes tells Caesar that he bears good news from their travels so Caesar immediately takes them home to their hidden base at a cave behind a waterfall. The apes then have a meeting about their plans. Blue Eyes tells them that they discovered a new place to call home and that humans will not be able to follow them there. This excites the apes but Winter urges them that they should leave immediately for fear that the humans may attack. Caesar silences Winter and agrees to Blue Eyes' suggestion that they be more tactful about their next move. Caesar reassures everyone that they will leave together. When night falls, Caesar stays vigilant with his sleeping family. He then notices an unusual green light passing down the waterfall in front of him. Curious, Caesar approaches the waterfall and discovers a rope, telling him that the humans have invaded them again. Caesar tells Blue Eyes to stay on guard and protect his family while he looks for the invading humans. Caesar meets Luca and notifies him of the attack. Back in the bedroom, Blue Eyes sees one of the soldiers entering and beats him to death. Meanwhile, Caesar manages to ambush one of the soldiers, but not before the soldier made contact with his colonel. The apes hear the colonel's response, telling the soldier that he killed the ape's leader. This prompts Caesar to hurry back to his family, where he meets the colonel, who is preparing to escape, eye to eye. The colonel realizes that he killed the wrong ape and looks at their bodies once more. Caesar follows his gaze, and to his demise, he sees Blue Eyes and his wife dead. The colonel attempts to kill the infuriated ape, but Caesar dodges the attack. The rest of the apes arrive, and the colonel fires to slow them down, and he escapes. Caesar chases the colonel on the rope he was retreating to. As Caesar is about to catch up, the colonel pulls his army knife and cuts the rope. Caesar falls down the river and swims away to safety, looking at the escaping colonel once more with a vengeance. Caesar returns to his room and mourns with the rest of his friends. To his comfort, Caesar finds his younger son, Cornelius, hiding amidst the fight earlier and embraces him. Due to the attack from last night, Caesar relocates the entire tribe to the new place Blue Eyes told them about. However, Caesar stays to seek vengeance while stalling the soldiers from catching up to the apes. The apes embark on their journey while Caesar makes his way to where the colonel is stationed. Unbeknownst to him, Maurice, Rocket, and Luca are following him. Caesar tells them that he should fight alone and that he may not make it back alive. But the apes insist that Caesar needs their help and they will make sure not to let him die, so the four apes embark on their journey. On the way, the apes find an abandoned village and explore the place. They then find a human who is gathering firewood. The human hastily picks up his gun to shoot, but before he could fire, Caesar shoots him. Suddenly, a noise breaks out from one of the houses. The apes aggressively enter the house, expecting another hostile, but to their surprise, they find a young girl lying on her bed. Caesar deems her harmless, so he commands everyone to search the place and take what they can. Maurice, however, sees that something is wrong with the girl and feels sorry, so he converses with her. Maurice asks Caesar to bring the girl as she won't survive alone. Caesar is hesitant but takes her with him anyway. The group continues to look for the human encampment and eventually finds one. They scout the place from afar with their binoculars, but instead of finding the colonel, they see Winter working with the humans. That night, the group sneakily finds their way to Winter's tent, startling the white ape. Caesar immediately asks about the colonel's whereabouts. Winter tells Caesar that the colonel is no longer at the camp and that he's making his way at the border to meet more soldiers coming from the north. Caesar asks about the border to which Winter is oblivious about. 
Winter tells Caesar that after Red Donkey bargain with him that if he tells them where Caesar was hiding, the colonel will spare his life. Caesar remembers his family and gets infuriated, telling Winter that his son and wife died because of what he did. Winter gets nervous but notices some soldiers outside his tent, so he attempts to call for help. Caesar and the group immediately stop Winter before he could make a sound. They were able to prevent the soldiers from suspecting, but Caesar accidentally chokes Winter and kills him while holding Winter down. Later that night, Caesar thinks about what he did and feels guilty. His guilt drives him to see Koba's ghost amidst the camp, reminding him that apes don't kill each other. Maurice tells Caesar that the soldiers are leaving, so the group follows them. On a snowy mountainous place, the group finds the soldiers stopping for some reason. Suddenly, they hear gunshots. As they hide, the gunshots continue, and the group wonders where they were shooting at. When the soldiers leave and then the blizzard stops, the group examines the place and finds dead bodies barely buried in the snow. They examine the bodies, removing the sackcloth covering the heads, and finds one of the bodies still alive but in great agony. Caesar tries to ask why he has been shot, but the man can't speak. Caesar then looks back at the young girl and realizes that they are the same. Feeling pity for the man's hopeless state, Caesar ends his suffering. The group loses track of the soldiers, so they try scouting the area from a tower. At the same time, a thief wearing a jacket approaches one of the horses. The girl is distracted by her toy, so the thief tries to steal their belongings. Luca looks down and sees the thief, and lets out a massive roar. The thief steals the horse and makes a run for it. The group immediately makes chase, but the thief is faster. The chase eventually stops when the thief leaves his horse at an abandoned mansion. The group catches up with the thief who has surrendered and shows himself to be an ape. The ape introduces himself as Bad Ape, but he doesn't understand the ape's sign language. Bad Ape tells his story, telling them that he is from the zoo where Caesar was once from. Bad Ape tells them that the other apes died a long time ago and that he is the only one who survived. Bad Ape is happy that he is not alone and thus gives them food to celebrate. Caesar looks at the food and asks Bad Ape where it is from. Bad Ape replies that he found them from the border where the soldiers are. Caesar insists that Bad Ape take them there, but Bad Ape refuses due to his fear. The group stays for the night. Bad Ape asks Caesar about the girl. Caesar replies that the girl has no one but them. Bad Ape tells Caesar that he looks sad and asks him if he has children. Caesar tells him about his family. Bad Ape sympathizes and tells him that he also has a child at the border. Bad Ape makes a deal with Caesar. If they help him find his child, he will take them to the border. The next morning the group leaves for the border with Bad Ape's guide. When they arrive, Caesar commands Luca that they scout the place from a closer distance. But while they are scouting, patrolling humans spot them. Luca pushes Caesar away and kills one of them. The other human threatens to kill Caesar, but Rocket immediately comes to the rescue. Luca is fatally injured from the fight and the group retreats to a safer place. They grieve for Luca as he draws his final breaths. Maurice now pleads to Caesar that he should stop his quest and join the other apes. Rocket objects and insists on avenging Luca. Maurice then frankly tells Caesar that he is becoming more like Koba. Caesar is furious and tells them to join the other apes and goes to the encampment alone. Caesar makes his way to the encampment. Along the way, he finds some of his apes killed and their bodies tied to a stake. Caesar hurries towards the edge to see the encampment, and to his despair, his entire civilization is already imprisoned there. One of the apes behind him is still alive, so he immediately frees him and asks him what happened. The ape tells him that they were ambushed, but the colonel didn't kill them and instead turned them into slaves. Before the ape could finish talking, he dies. Suddenly, Red Donkey hits Caesar from behind the head and knocks him out. When Caesar wakes up, he finds himself inside the encampment with the colonel. The colonel tells him that he's curious why Caesar isn't with the tribe and asks him if he has come to save his apes. Caesar replies that he came to kill him. The colonel then asks him who he killed that night and Caesar answers. The colonel tells him that he meant to come there to kill him and apologizes for his loss. He then asks Caesar how he found him, to which Caesar answers that someone told him and that more soldiers are coming from the north to join him wipe out the apes. The colonel somewhat disregards the matter, and they take Caesar outside and puts him in one of the cages. There are two cages, one for the adult and one for the younglings. Caesar sees his son Cornelius calling to him from the younglings cage. Caesar, at the sight of the apes, rethinks everything and regrets his actions. When morning comes, the soldiers open the cages, and the enemy apes start lashing the prisoned apes forcing them to do their slave work. It turns out that the apes were forced to build a wall. Caesar wonders why the humans need a wall and starts observing the area and sees defense turrets on the walls. One of the apes tells him that the tribe is starving and they haven't been given food or water for days. While this is going on, one of the weakened apes gets into an accident and causes a scene. The soldier commands Red Donkey to punish the ape, and he proceeds to lash him with a whip. Caesar commands Red Donkey to stop. The apes revolt with Caesar and they start raising their voices against the soldiers. The colonel then commands one of his soldiers and Red Donkey to bring Caesar. They force Caesar to kneel, and Red Donkey starts lashing him in front of the colonel. When the lashing stops, the colonel tells Caesar to command his apes back to work. Caesar refuses and tells him they need food and water. The colonel then shoots the weakened ape, points the gun at Caesar, and starts a countdown, pressuring the infuriated ape to obey him. Seeing the standoff, one of the apes initiates the work and the rest of the apes follow. This stops the colonel, but he commands Red Donkey to string Caesar in a stake. 
While this is happening, Maurice and the group are watching from a distance. They see the state of the apes and plan for a way to save them. Later that night, Red Donkey releases Caesar from the strings and tells him that the colonel wants to see him. At the command center, the colonel warns Caesar that if he dares interrupts the work again, he will kill his tribe one by one. Caesar continues to demand food and water, or else they won't finish the work. The colonel reminds him who's in charge. Caesar then tells the colonel about his observations, that the armies coming from the north aren't allies but are against the colonel. The colonel is surprised and impressed at Caesar's perception and intelligence. The colonel explains that they are fighting because the apes will eventually outclass the humans, for it is the law of nature. He then explains to Caesar that the virus that almost wiped them out has mutated and started taking away their ability to speak or think properly. It started with the colonel's son, whom he had to kill with his own hands to protect the rest of humanity. After that, the colonel ruthlessly purged everyone who had the infection, prompting armies from the north to stop them. The colonel makes his purpose clear, to prevent the apes from dominating the planet, so he tells Caesar that he is glad that he killed Caesar's kin. Caesar immediately lunges at him, but Red Donkey and Preacher stops him. The colonel stands back to his feet and tells Caesar that he is too irrational. That same night, Maurice and the group position themselves closer to the camp to get a better look. Maurice and Rocket are looking for ways to go in, but Bad Ape insists that they shouldn't. They hear some soldiers coming, so the group retreats to a safer spot, where Bad Ape accidentally falls to a tunnel. The next morning, the soldiers finally distribute food and water to the apes except for Caesar, who is still tied to a stake. Maurice and the group search the tunnel, and they find a soft spot where they could easily dig out a path that leads directly inside the camp. Bad Ape and the young girl heads back out, and they both see Caesar in agony. The young girl is worried about Caesar, so she heads over to the camp despite Bad Ape trying to stop her. Caesar is freezing and starts to hallucinate about Koba again. Koba tells Caesar to give up and join him. Caesar then realizes that Red Donkey is in front of him while he is hallucinating. Red Donkey releases Caesar under the colonel's commands, forcing him to work. While Caesar is sleeping in his cage, the young girl makes her way in undetected and hands Caesar her doll. She then proceeds to aid him with the help of the rest of the apes, giving him water to drink and food to eat. The apes then show their determination to persevere and remind Caesar that they are strong together. Suddenly, soldiers are approaching the cages, endangering the young girl. Maurice and the group see this, so Rocket enters the camp and makes a scene to distract the soldiers from the girl. The soldiers immediately surround Rocket, and Red Donkey approaches him. Rocket then tackles Red Donkey, and the two beat each other until the colonel stops them. The colonel is now suspicious of other apes who might still be outside, so he orders a patrol and puts Rocket in the pen. Red Donkey beats Rocket some more before leaving. Rocket then gets up, determined, and tells Caesar to prepare for an escape. The next morning, the colonel releases Caesar from his cage to work, but he finds the doll the girl gave Caesar. The colonel wonders what the doll is and how it got there but dismisses Caesar for work. Rocket and Caesar work together to count the steps that lead towards the pens, and they communicate with Maurice and Bad Ape by sign language. Maurice and Bad Ape immediately head back to the tunnel and start tracing the steps. That night, the apes head back to the pen, and Red Donkey chains Caesar back to his cage. Red Donkey tells Caesar that the colonel will kill the apes once the war is over. Caesar replies that the colonel will not win. He then intimidates Red Donkey by telling him that he too will not survive. Red Donkey is speechless and leaves. Meanwhile, the young girl who was watching the apes hurries to Maurice to notify him that the apes are back on their pens. Maurice commends her and shows his gratitude by telling her that she is brave. Maurice then gives her the name Nova to which she happily accepts. Bad Ape finishes digging the soft ground above, and they sneakily check on the pen. When the soldiers leave the pen, the apes immediately meet Bad Ape to thank him, and he proceeds to introduce himself. Maurice, however, notices that the tunnel is flooding, making them unable to dig towards the younglings. They inform Caesar, and Caesar immediately improvises. The apes taunt the watchman by throwing mud at him, prompting him to enter the pen by himself and threatening the apes. Rocket continues throwing mud at the soldier, baiting him to their pitfall trap and relieving him of his keys and gun. Rocket and Caesar sneakily make their way to the younglings, where Caesar reunites with Cornelius. They then guide the younglings to the main pen, and the apes begin escaping through the tunnel. Caesar, however, stays behind to settle his score with the colonel. Suddenly, the armies from the north arrive and attack the base. The soldiers immediately prepare to defend themselves. Preacher, however, notices that the apes are gone and the pens were empty. Outside the camp, the firing slows down the apes' escape as the enemy jets bombard the walls. Caesar finds himself in the command room and sees the colonel in his bed. Caesar picks up a gun and is about to shoot the colonel. But to his surprise, the colonel is infected and is unable to speak. He sees the doll and realizes what happened. The colonel then pulls Caesar's hand and points the gun to himself, wanting to die. This pressures Caesar, wanting to pull the trigger to exact revenge, but in the end, Caesar couldn't do it, so he puts the gun down and feels sorry for the poor colonel. The agonizing colonel then reaches for the gun and shoots himself. War continues to rage outside when one of the soldiers in the front line alongside Red Donkey spots the escaping apes. They shoot them down, killing a number of them. Caesar heads out and sees this, taking a pack of grenades with him and jumping out. On the front line, Red Donkey starts to realize what he's done and feels sorry for the apes. A soldier commands the donkey to grab a grenade launcher, and while doing so, he sees Caesar running towards them. 
Caesar is about to throw a grenade at a gas tank when suddenly he gets shot with an arrow by Preacher. Caesar is pinned down, and Preacher is about to deal the final blow, but he explodes. It turns out that Red Donkey used the grenade launcher at Preacher. The soldiers immediately shoot Red Donkey then immediately fires at Caesar. Caesar dodges the bullets while reaching for the grenades. He successfully throws the grenade at the tanks, blowing the entire place up. Caesar manages to escape through the tunnel. He finds his way outside and sees the northern soldiers arriving at the camp, celebrating their victory. The explosion, however, causes a massive avalanche. This forces the apes to climb on tall trees to avoid the avalanche. The humans are wiped out before they could run. Caesar hastily runs towards a tree, and he survives along with the rest of the apes. The war finally ends, and the apes travel peacefully towards their new home and finally arrive at a beautiful savannah. The ape celebration is cut short when they realize that Caesar's wound did not recover, causing him to lose a lot of blood throughout the journey. Maurice notices this, but Caesar tells Maurice not to worry. Caesar further tells him that they are finally at peace and can go on even without his leadership. Maurice starts tearing up and speaks for the first time, reassuring Caesar that he will preserve his legacy for his son. Caesar smiles and looks at his tribe once more before drawing his last breath and finally rests, knowing that his tribe, the apes, are finally safe. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.